Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotions, and thank you again so much for our time together. All campuses today, all services, it's family weekend, and we encourage as a family, you come, young people, sit with your parents, children, sit with the parents, husbands and wives, sit together. This is a very important day as we begin to talk about family revival as seen in the life of Jacob. But right now, I'd like us to go back to the book of Ezra. The people of Israel have been taken into captivity because of their sin. The temple in Jerusalem has been destroyed. The sacred articles have been taken and put into the temples uh, in Persia. And then God speaks. Verse 1, In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his reign and to put it in writing. And what he does is make a proclamation to allow the people of Israel to go back and rebuild the temple of the one true God. Now that's amazing, that God speaks to an unsaved ruler. Remember, the kings of this earth are God's servants also. God speaks to an unsaved ruler and says, let the people go back. And so the people went back. Everyone whose heart moved them, it says in verse 5, but then as soon as they get back, they've made this long journey back to Jerusalem. And they don't start rebuilding right away. In fact, in chapter 3, it says, When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, then the people assembled and began to build the altar. So the people went back to Israel and got settled into their homes before they started the, the great work of rebuilding the temple. They made sure their families were taken care of. But even before they settled in, as soon as they came to Jerusalem, verse 68 of chapter 2 says, When they arrived at the house of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the heads of the families gave free will offerings toward the rebuilding of the house of God on its former site. Now that's a beautiful truth to me. That as soon as they got back and they saw the temple in the condition it was in, they knew they were going to have to go settle in their families. They knew they were going to have to go rebuild their homes and get their families taken care of for a few months. But the first thing they did was sow a seed to build God's house. Before they went off and began to build their houses and rebuild their, 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 their farms and things, the first thing they did was sow a huge, generous seed to build God's house. And because they sowed that seed to build God's house, God then worked with them and kept them safe as they built their house. Now, they didn't start the building yet, but they'd sowed the seed. For many years, I've taught you that if you build God's house, God will build your house. So many Christians today, they've, they've lost a sense of God's house. It's, it's perfectly all right to have your church in a movie theater or just in a rented facilities. No, it's not. Not long term. The people of God need to rise up and begin to build a house of God. I pastored the same church here for 35 years. I've watched so many churches come and grow like mushrooms. And the reason they die like a mushroom is because they never built the house of God. They spent all the money on television. They spent all the money on, on lifestyle. But they never sacrificed and built the house of God. Now, when, when a leader will build God's house, then it doesn't matter whether the leader dies and goes to heaven or whatever. The people will continue to have a place to meet they will continue to have a place to come and be with God. And I challenge you today, whatever church you're a part of, get together with the people and say it's not enough for us to be on leased land. It's not enough to be in a leased building. Let's build something permanent for the house of God. Let's build God's house and God will build our house.